Good morning. Good morning, everybody. And we are so excited to see and talk with you this morning. We appreciate you. We ask you to forgive us for starting a few minutes late. Right? But it is time to shine. It's time to get up. It's time to get moving. I don't know what the temperature is outside, but for me, it felt good. Maybe not for Mildred since she don't like that kind of weather. But for me, it is excellent. It's tolerable. It's not. It's not even 40 degrees. It could be different if it's like 20 or something. It'd be all right. uh, so let us first apologize because I don't know if y'all can hear all the extra noise. Um, but they pouring concrete and stuff across the street. Yeah. So I'm just apologizing ahead of time, y'all. Yeah, they're they're, they're building a home. <clears throat> And that'll be the last home that can be built on our street. Yay! No more, no more stuff. <laughs> you know, uh, it, it's only nine houses. It would be only nine houses on the street, so that's good. We we'll so, get a chance to so solidify the street. <clears throat> so we're gonna go ahead and get started. Right. Or just gonna go ahead and get started while I'm still inviting people in. All right. So I hope you had a good week. If you did not have a good week, you did have a good week because you're still alive. So we are. Um, just want to encourage you that no matter how bad it may seem, no matter how tough the week may get, mm -hmm. God is still God. And he still gives us opportunities to make things better, right. to have an opportunity to make an intelligent decision, to make a choice that promotes life mm -hmm. and denounces death. Uh, <clears throat> Gives us an opportunity to be able to build relationships. Uh, uh, my cousin Terrence Johnson, Pastor Heidi, he talked about forgiveness. Uh, I think that was Thursday night. Uh, it was pretty good. And so I'll just piggyback on that for like 10 seconds. If there's anybody that feels like it's something that was done so bad that they don't feel like they can let it go, I would say let it go. You know, allow yourself to live, allow yourself to to not allow that to be the wall or the barrier that keeps you from being what God wants you to be. You can't control what people do. You cannot control what people say. The only thing you can do is control how you respond to it. And I did not say react right. because if you react, that's already you already lost. You are responding to something that someone is saying. It doesn't have to be true. It doesn't have to be accurate. And being right all the time doesn't mean being right. So with that being said, I've said enough. So um, we want to talk to you this morning about the power of, of being, you know, together and working together. Uh, it's called better together. Uh, yeah. Scriptures in the Bible that talk about how can two walk together unless they agree. <laughs> and so part of the vows that you took that you said that you would be accountable for, it calls for you walking together in unity with your God, with your elder brother Jesus, that the Holy Spirit leads you. And also that um you are walking in that space, in that time, in that relationship with God and with your spouse. And so walking together, agreeing mm -hmm. uh, means that, hey, you have this, I guess, this reoccurring time whenever you get up that, hey, we can uh, make something happen together. Despite our uh, disagreements or despite differences of, differences of opinion and how something should get done, when it all said and done, as long as you keep Jesus in it, as long as you allow God to be who he is and be the forefront, as long as you allow time for quietness Mm -hmm. so that God can speak to you through the Holy Spirit, then you and your spouse are better together. Right. So the scripture comes from Proverbs chapter 27 and verse number 17. All right. My wife is going to find that. 
um, and then we'll keep moving forward. But you all are outstanding. Good morning, Miss Lydia. Good morning, Vincent. Good morning, Miss Davis. <laughs> all right. Yes, ma'am. So and y'all let us know. Uh, mm -hmm. Please, somebody let us know if y'all can hear us. If we're talking loud enough. Yeah, because the uh, the trucks are pretty loud. They got a lot of concrete to pour. So just let us know if if we're loud enough. Good morning, Hannah. Good morning, Hannah. How you doing? We love you. All right, Proverbs uh, chapter twenty seven and verse seventeen says, "Let people learn from one another, just as iron sharpens iron." That's right. So I don't know if you know about the process of a blacksmith, but I can tell you one thing: in order to make knives. In order to to make something that's going to be able to cut, you know, you keep rubbing this iron against this iron, mm -hmm. and it becomes a blade. Doesn't start off that way because it's all rugged and it's not um it's not together. Uh, it's very rough. But every time you keep rubbing that iron across that other piece of iron, that's old school. Now it just got a knife sharper, mm -hmm. but it still has two pieces of blades that right. are catching the blade mm -hmm. in the middle. So the iron sharpens the iron, making it strong so that it can perform the task that it's supposed to perform. So when we talk about iron sharpening the iron as, we, as it relates to marriage, we're talking about this iron sharpening this iron so we can perform our task together and we can do it uh, with success. Right. Uh, and we don't know what we're going to face day in and day out. We do understand that there is a God and there's a devil. And so we understand that we need to pray for each other. Even sometimes when we may not pray in the morning, which that doesn't happen often, but we pray for each other. It's just enough for me to say, hey, I can send a text. But if I'm going through something, I don't even have to call her. I know she's praying for me. So we talk about better together. You are better together. You have strengths. Mm -hmm. You have those areas that maybe your spouse may not have. Right. And because you complement each other, instead of being defensive, like sometimes I can be, you can use those strengths from your spouse to elevate yourself. And in elevating yourself, because you are allowing your spouse to help you in areas where you actually need support, then it becomes not like you feel like you're being attacked and more like you feel like you're being helped right. or groomed. Because I tell you, it's nothing worse than already being stressed and going through something and being at odds with one another. Mm -hmm. That that just makes the whole situation worse. Well, it puts the it tips the scales. It tips the scales into the devil's corner because he understands they're being divided means that you're separated and then he can play on the one that doesn't have the strongest mind to be dealing with attacks a lot of times when we talk about attacks you know one can see it way ahead of time right they start seeing the, 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 the symptoms and they start seeing the, the things that show that the enemy is in the middle of something and that person that is stronger in their area so you can have one that's strong in prayer you have one that's strong in reading and with that, you know, you can do something to combat what the enemy's doing. But when you don't take that strength and use it for the benefit of the marriage, or if you feel like, hey, you know, you just pick it on me or this, that, and the other, no, it's an area that you can grow in and that can cause the marriage to be stronger right. because you're strong. Because now the very thing and the very reason why God joined you together you can see that those things are becoming something that can help you. So just stay focused on that. And we're looking forward to hearing some outstanding praise reports about how iron sharpens iron and how you grow as a as a as a couple. How you grow and and benefit from each other, that you continue to speak the word of God over each other and allow that to be like a, a foundation of peace even though you may not see it right now bye bye baby bye baby have a good day at work all right and that's right miss lydia they help each other mm -hmm. you know 
because one one thing that um we have learned through our journey you never know what your spouse is facing at work uh-huh. so it's better to be on the same page and make sure you're lifting your spouse up mm. you know um basically being their biggest cheerleader praying for them you know like you said send a little a, a text throughout the day or yeah. whatever because you just don't know so um i'm going to read this because this is coming from our devotional and it just talks about how how things kind of matriculate in a relationship good morning miss jerry's how you doing so yeah and they don't always say so you're right Ms. Lydia. so i'm gonna repeat what she said so sometimes when we mean that compartmentalize things that we go through we don't always say right now i try with all diligence not to bring that stuff to my house but if i cannot or you know i try to just stay in the truck until i can get most of that out because i don't want to bring that foolishness into my home but if i come through the door and i don't speak and i just hug her and i don't move and she knows it's been a really bad one i mean a bad bad one and i don't see anything i just stay there and i just hug her until i feel like i'm ready to move you know so you're right, Ms. Lydia. We don't always say what we're going through, but that doesn't stop anybody from praying over the spouse. Because if you understand the type of job that they have, if your spouse is shared to you, some of the, you know, the people that just don't have a heart for being supportive right. and a person that's positive, then you know what they're facing. Because negative people with their negative vibe. They, you know, they, they, they only, they only see that. They don't see anything good. Sometimes it is necessary to talk it out to relieve stress. Yeah. And that's true. That make that makes a big difference yes. because one thing you definitely don't want is for your spouse to feel like they're alone uh-huh. in the stuff that they're going through. And then the gear, it just, <clears throat> and I think that it, I think that it adds value to the marriage when you are, are willing to talk something out. Mm-hmm. You don't, and, and I and I want to say this. Don't feel like you always have to say something. If they're just trying to talk it out, maybe they're trying to solve it on their own. You know, I'm saying that from a male standpoint, because I know we like to try to fix stuff all the time. Sometimes it's not even what you need to do. Sometimes you just need to listen. Because I'm learning as a leader is that when you always supply uh, answers to problems, they don't value the work that it takes to come to that decision. But when you keep asking them why then they kind of find it out on their own right. you didn't really give them the answer they found it on their own mm-hmm. but i believe that it should be and if it's not it should be a safe space for your husband or your wife to talk to you about their day and you don't have to feel like you're superman that you gotta fix it sometimes you just need to listen and just be there for the person and that's enough and then sometimes, yeah, if they ask you for your opinion, mm-hmm. then you give it. If they don't ask you for your opinion, no. Oh. <laughs> no, I'm saying like if they don't ask you because <laughs> they're trying to figure it out on their own. Right. And you're trying to fix it for them and you're not giving them space to solve it on their own, then it it becomes your idea when all they were really trying to do is just kind of measure the pros and cons and then get to a solution on their own. But one, but one thing, and 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 you know, we've been through this before mm-hmm. too, you know, because we we candid or whatever, mm-hmm. is that don't make your <clears throat> spouse feel like, you know, if you're trying to help or come up with suggestions, if they say, you know, they're trying to oh. get something done, mm-hmm. you know, and you come up with suggestions, mm-hmm. don't make them feel like they're being a father, or like, oh, you know. Kind of getting them on nervous, okay? <laughs> you know. She's trying to talk about me. That. Get She's out. trying to talk about me. That's what she's doing. You know. Uh, yeah, so. But yes, I um, and so that's something that you know I had to kind of work through because you know it's just something you have to work through, and I think we've gotten better with that. Uh, me not making her feel like the suggestion that she's given. Or not valid or valued. 
But one thing he he did this close to me, and I kind of understood it after that. Mm -hmm. But you know, we still had to work on it. Is that sometimes we get frustrated with ourselves right. when we don't think about, you know, like why didn't I think about this? Mm -hmm. You know, so it's like why did you you came up with a good idea, but I'm frustrated because I didn't come up with the idea. Mm -hmm. You know, but we have to learn just not to do that. Yeah. Um. So I'm reading what um, what Sante said. She said, "This is what I have learned." Mm -hmm is not to answer just listen so i ask in what capacity you need me a listener advice opinion or just a hug that's it's, great advice yeah because you just and maybe maybe one of those areas is what, what they need mm -hmm. and that's okay because some things are not as big as they sound like when you hear them, if that makes sense. Right. You know, I think once the person calms down, they realize that was it really that much to sweat over or not? Mm -hmm. And then sometimes it's really that bad. And so then you really have to be a good listener to figure out, okay, I want to support them, but I don't want to, you know, do anything that caused them to make a bad decision. So right. I'm just going to pay attention because every situation is different. There are some that are similar, but some are totally different from the others. So, good morning, Miss Gay. So, I'm going to read this. Okay. Better together. Iron sharpens iron. Together we are stronger. How can two walk together unless they agree? The vows that you committed to, it requires you to have some agreement. Because without agreement, there's no clarity about which way you're going to go. That brings about confusion and confusion is from the enemy. And that's all he would like for us to be is confused. So you and, can't take you can't take vows and still be about me, mine, and mine. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you can't, you know, you can't be self when you're married, you cannot be selfish. So things that you did before that, you know, didn't require you to talk about with anybody else mm -hmm. you just did, once you're married, you can't do it. Yeah. Because a lot of things that you would do that you do not only affect you but it affects your spouse your family you know so you have to take those things into consideration so i'm gonna read this it says we are attracted to our partner's strengths at first but over time those strengths can rub against our weaknesses they challenge the habits and faults we tolerate in ourselves we're forced to take a fresh look and who we are and who we ought to be. Your spouse's quiet patience stands in contrast to your own quick temper. Diligence and organization stand apart from a haphazard approach to life. <laughs> Unorganized people like myself. Okay, this says easygoing spontaneity draws you away from your need to control. It says, eager generosity loosens your grip on your finances. The character of your spouse becomes God's tool to build your faith and make you more like Jesus. What do you admire about your partner today? Which qualities set an example for your life? Open your hearts to one another's influence. Be willing to change and grow. Pray for a teachable spirit to learn from your spouse. Allow the Lord to reveal himself in the ways they love, serve, and live for him. Oh, man. <laughs> That's a lot. Quit trying to love people the way you want to love them and love them the way they want to receive it. That's it. Yes. That's You'll get more done. In that way. That's compromise, that's <laughs> give and take, that's growing, that's yeah. learning. Yeah. There's a lot of stuff in here. That's oh a lot. My goodness. So patience and what's the what's the opposite of patience? Uh um patience and and, and not what's another what's another word? Annoyance. Not that's not oh, so annoying. <laughs> So patience, and then I mean, just I guess sometimes it's a word. 
If it's not patience, it's, it's something else. But when you when you're very eager and you don't wait, and then the other person has patience because they see the bigger picture. The eager people they want right now. The patient people they see, and they see the, the little pitfalls and stuff ahead because the vision is that big, you know. Impatient people. I don't know which which one of the us that is. I guess we we uh change out from that area, huh? Uh uh, I don't change out that area. I'm the patient one. So sorry, baby. She's impatient. <laughs> if you want to, if you want to, yeah, see, anxious him. Yeah, anxious. If you want to see Millicent in the store in the in the line when it's time to check out, you will see you will see impatience. All right, get on with the message. Uh, <laughs> so um, understanding, yeah. So those those things are important. But there's so much in here that was said. They talked about people that are easy going and those that are spontaneous. I mean, you you have that because I guess if you had two people that were not spontaneous. And they were just really dry and, and stale. Nobody would ever have no fun. You laugh, they don't want to laugh. You know, so I guess, you know, it's just a way of, excuse me, it's just a way of really um, thinking about what in my partner, what in my spouse do I admire the most that makes me the person that I am, the, the, the things that make me strong. I know I'm not organized, so she is, and I, I thank God for that. So, or looking at your spouse and, you know, <clears throat> saying, okay, well, I really like that about mm -hmm. them, you know, but I don't have that, so uh -huh. I want that for myself. So then that's an opportunity to pray and say, God, help me to mm -hmm. to give more of that for myself, mm -hmm. you know, because if it, if it works, it just mm -hmm. works. Or help me to develop my own way of, yeah. of getting that, that done. Yeah. That, I mean, but I guess, I guess because, you know, we used to always have this, this disagreement about a way, and and, and she would get upset. <laughs> I mean, it wouldn't be an argument; it would just be like, oh. and I would just because I don't think like you. Oh, I mean, used to hate when he said that. Yeah, yeah, but we realized, you know what? We realized when we went to the Spark Conference uh, at Lakewood. Um, and there was so many different couples that were presenting, uh -huh. um, and one of the one of the couples that presented, they were real real big on statistics because they both um, had written books. But the wife, she had, she was really not really the writer of it. She was more of the person that um, she was the one that really wanted to um, look at the, the, the stats. And so she was just talking about how in decisions, and she just started coming up with all these different decisions. And one of the things that came up about the marriage was the husband had did something, and she was talking about something else, and they didn't get into an argument, but she started looking at the percentages of certain things about what men do and what men value. And the things that women value it's not that men don't value them. I guess they're just not on the top priority because we're not wired that way. And so it was something. It was something as simple as he had did some kind of house project, and it was something that she had asked him to do, and he had done it. It had been like it had been like two weeks, and she never ever acknowledged that it was done. Oh, and, yeah. and she was like, "Well, he, they had got into a disagreement about something. It wasn't nothing ugly," and she said some things. And he said, you know, did you ever notice that I had uh, taken care of something that you asked me to do? And she said at that point, she realized that she had a, she, she had a glimpse of the understanding of how we think because we want to provide, we want to protect, and then we want to, to do things that more are on that, that side of the, the, the coin. The emotions and the other things we don't always have. And then it was something that he didn't do, and he didn't value. You know, I'm not gonna say value because it was not like he didn't value, but it was something that she had done, and he didn't even notice. Uh, and, and so then she said, you know, uh, most men want to be respected, 
and most women want to be loved. And that's a kind of a, a, a it's like a, an assortment of things. Right. Now, I can't put my hand on all of them, but, you know. So basically what that requires is, and I think the last time uh, we spoke, I mentioned it, is to, to study your spouse. To, yeah. to learn your spouse, pay mm -hmm. attention to what they like, what they don't like. Mm -hmm. um, and it's really not hard to do if, if that's definitely uh, a focus of yours to mm -hmm. propel your marriage forward. Yeah. I don't think that's hard. You, yeah, know? You, you study, you find out what they like, and then you and then you do it. You know, uh, Millicent always finds the small things. She pays attention to like really tight details. And so now, when it's a big project, it's, uh, when I'm doing something at my job, when it's a big project, I'm okay with the project. I'm just not really on the small, I guess the small things that you see that can elevate it. Now I'm having more of an eye of that. And even if it's not me, I make sure that whoever else is on the team that has that attention to detail take that because that's something that I got to get better at. So if I'm not going to, if I'm not there focused, like I'm just not going to say focused, but if I'm not the one that's paying attention to the so, so small details, I'm thinking about the big chunks, mm -hmm. and then they need to be able to do that because that makes the project better and that makes the product of whatever it is that you wanted to accomplish it's going to be really solid about, you know, whatever that is. And so, right. um, when we, I mean, I'm just looking at all the different things in here. It says eager generosity loses your grip on your, on your finances. You know, there are some marriages that have no problem with finances. And there are some that do. There are some marriages that don't have any problem with affection and some do. There are some marriages that don't have any problem with, um, being able to support the spouse and the things that they like to do. Right. And some do. You know, we've we've um, been about the business of supporting each other in the things that we want to do, uh, even if that's something that we may not like. It ain't, it ain't been that often in, in anything like that. You know, when my wife's going to school, she was supported. When I was going to school, I was supported. If it's things that we doing, you know, we, we figure out um, how that impacts our home. How does that impact our lives? What's the Jesus in it? You know, we evaluate that and then we go forward. Oh uh, man, and I'm telling you, when you decide that you're gonna make a big decision and and, and if you're not together, you know, it's really gonna be a, a, a monumental fail. Oh, you know, put on the boxing gloves, let's get ready to rumble. Yeah, because I mean for <laughs> us, if it's gonna be a monumental fail, then it's gonna be because we made the decision and we don't yeah. and we're gonna sleep with that decision. Mm -hmm. But when you're not together, and when you're not sharpening each other, right. and it's one of them big, one of them big decisions, and you know y'all not in agreement, and you make it anyway, man, you gonna put you gonna, you you gonna put some serious stress on your love for each other. So what we've learned to do in those situations, when when our decisions are torn like that, mm -hmm. we just don't make any decision at all. Yes. We just put it on hold, mm -hmm. and we talk about it later, and we go, you know, we go pray about that thing together. Yeah, cousin Steve. It's good. To, it's good to see you, bro. Good morning, Val. Good morning, Deanna. Hey, Miss Deanna. All right. And so, um, I I think that you know when we talk about being together, find every single positive thing about your spouse, and you accentuate that just like a woman put on makeup to accentuate her face, or she wears certain garment to accentuate her body. You find those things that you know that add value to her, that add value to him, and you keep building that up. You don't stop. You don't quit. You don't get lax. You let them know, even if it's the smallest thing that you appreciate, that you thank them. It's okay to say thank you. It's not a sin to say thank you. It's actually a real word. Thank you. I appreciate what you did for me. So, good morning, Miss uh, Lawanda. I'm so glad you're here after 34 minutes. I, <laughs> I love you so much, Miss Lawanda. So, um, 
Um, really though, I think that um Good morning, cousin. All right, Sandra. All right. So you feel that in. Come on. Fill it in. Fill it in. Fill it in. You know, take your cup. This is your spouse. And you want to keep pouring in. Pouring in. Pouring in. Until it becomes overflowing. Keep pouring into them right. until it becomes overflowing. Keep pouring into them that prayer. Keep pour, pouring into them. Because the only time when it doesn't happen is when you quit. Because just because you don't see it right then doesn't mean that God is not working on them. Right. You know, good and well, a building ain't built in one day. It takes time. It has to have a foundation. It has to have walls that's strong. And while he's working on them, you mm -hmm. ask him to, to strengthen you yeah. and to be patient. And to be patient. Because um, you got to celebrate the wins. Mm -hmm. And if your husband that you've been praying for does 25% toward the 100% of what you want and you see it, you better get on the amen corner. So that, that way he understands that you appreciate his effort to right. make change that doesn't happen overnight. That she makes change that doesn't happen overnight right. good morning miss mcdonald hey we know all right so, so and then <clears throat> another thing too uh what men have to understand is that whatever you give women mm -hmm. they multiply that and give it back are you sure mm -hmm. i'm positive <laughs> <laughs> i'm positive i and i've heard that so many times and at first i was like huh well whatever men give a woman they multiply and give it back. Good morning, Miss Higgs. Hey, Rena. So, so you uh, know, when you're, when you have it being so loving, uh -huh. and then you change that and you start, like you say, pouring into your spouse, uh -huh. you know, a woman is going to notice that. She's going to notice that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then she goes, like, hmm, okay. Yeah, I hear that. <laughs> now, so, what, what about me? You have to not stop doing what you did. Um, I have to work on that. But you have to find time daily to make sure that they understand that they're valued and they're not forgotten. They're not somewhere put on the shelf. You know, you have to continue to, I'm not going to say restore, but I think it's just really build on the fact that each day comes with its own challenges, but that's another day to love somebody. Okay. You know, that's another day to let them know how special they are in your life, mm -hmm. no matter what you face. Okay. So I think that that's just a work in progress for me, but my wife understands that I love her and that I want her to be, you know, happy. But at the same time, even in difficult conversations, even in uncomfortable conversations mm -hmm. I listen not here but I listen mm -hmm. and I think that when you when you take that approach even if you become defensive at first mm -hmm. if you got to go back and really sit down because I think that <clears throat> I think that even when a <clears throat> excuse me I even think that even when a person is a little bit defensive if they're really serious about the relationship, mm -hmm they will uh, go back and just think about what transpired. And when we talk about what we learned earlier, in, in, when it talks about love languages and things, when a person is pouring into you and they're giving you something uh, that you need, um, then that's the opportunity to really focus in, because everybody, everybody not gonna respond to the truth uh, the way you think they would, just because it is the truth. Some people have to let it settle a little bit. Mm -hmm. But when you in our marriage, you know, I can go let it sit, and I can go think about it, and then I can come back and have a, a conversation with my wife that's meaningful instead of it just being something pass through so we work on that and that's just working in progress 
So let me see. And that's right. Um, I want to go back to mm -hmm. uh, what Shanice said. Yeah. She said, we follow our men's lead, especially when they're pouring into us. Yeah. And that is and that is so true. It, it makes a world of difference. And I think that if more men understood that process, mm -hmm. then <clears throat> they would be more willing to to go the extra step, you know, or give a little bit more. You know, it's just like if I'm putting if I'm constantly putting money in a 401k, mm -hmm. you know, and then it's once I get ready return. to retire, yes, you know, if I'm <clears throat> to to six hundred and fifty thousand dollars, you know, I don't expect at the time when I need it that it's only fifty thousand in there. Yeah. You know, that's that's a big deficit. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, it's the same thing with your marriage. Not seeing that you're mm -hmm. putting into it just to see what you can get out of it, but it's so much sweeter when you're putting into that marriage, <clears> putting <throat> into that man, putting into that woman, mm -hmm. pouring into them, and they're willingly giving up yeah. themselves back. It just, everything just gels better. Hey, Mr. Graydon. Good morning. So, uh, and the Wanda said yes, and we all and we also they can't pour out of an empty cup. Build your spouse up to have something to pour into you. Yeah, and that's right. It goes back to that. I mean, if you see, I mean, you y'all were y'all were dating, and there were some qualities in that man that you mm -hmm. saw that were strong, mm -hmm. and for some reason over time or whatever, mm -hmm. some things could have dissipated. Right. You pray that God spark his heart to understand how mm -hmm. valuable and how how precious and priceless you are <clears throat> right. in the relationship so that they can get back to where they were and to keep moving forward. Mm -hmm. The sad thing about it is <clears throat> going back to relationships is that if that person didn't receive that as a child, if that person didn't see that in their own family, then it becomes difficult for them to be able to do something that they haven't experienced or know how to do because they wasn't groomed in that. Right. So you have to look at those type of things. And I'm only talking to those that are dating right now. You know, if you see some things like that, you have to ask yourself the question. <clears throat> it's going to be like that for you. Right. If you see a non-affectionate husband with, 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 a, with a wife, that a, of a person that you're dating, mm -hmm. or you see a non-affectionate wife to a, a to a to a husband of a person that you're dating, or you see them and they fussing <laughs> and fighting or whatever, you know. So, uh -huh. Lamar to be messy. What she say? She said, "Give Mr. Johnson some water." Oh, you got jokes. Just bring me back some more coffee. Thank you. I appreciate it. <laughs> I love you. All right. So, Miss uh, A. All right now. What's up there, Mr. Ned, Ms. Rodney, Mr. Rodney Ned, Ms. Sanders? So <clears throat> we're talking about being better together, and we've been having some real um, strong conversation about how um, iron sharp is iron, because that was the scripture. The scripture was Proverbs 27 and verse number 17. She going to give me some coffee, LaWanda. Thank you, ma'am. So, um, we're just talking about how, you know, as a husband and wife, uh, wife and husband, as a couple, we can pour into each other. Uh, we can pour and we can sharpen each other to, to look at what strengths we have apart that complement each other and continue to grow. That's how you get through some of the most difficult times in your life. When you have somebody that's got your back, I mean, got your back. Like, like nothing ever in life, just no matter what you face, you know that person's got your back, they're, they're with you, they're not going to let you slip, fall, or slide away. So uh, I just encourage you to uh, really, I encourage you to really just think about how important it is to lift up your spouse in prayer, how important it is to speak those things that be not as though they were. How important it is to speak positivity, to let them know that they're strong, that they're confident, that they walk with their shoulders up, 
that they shouldn't be looking down, that they should take every day as a blessing, no matter what kind of day it is. If you're alive, you have an opportunity to be a champion for God. So this is daily. This is something that you don't stop doing. This is something that you continue to uh, push and practice. That which you practice, you become good at. So iron sharpens iron, meaning that you and your wife, you 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 make each other great, and you have God there to continue to strengthen you as you learn, as you grow, as you go through these difficult times together. It's only to make you and your wife, your marriage stronger. And if you dating, then you understand the type of work, the type of commitment that it takes to have a lasting marriage that has some power. Yeah. And so that, you know, even, and I, I know I missed it because I wasn't <clears> in here, <throat> but, um, you know, when you're dating, you you have to study each other. You talk about Ms. that? Davidson. Yeah. You had already talked about, oh yeah. No, I didn't talk about it in that regard. We were talking about studying each other after we were already married. Oh, well, you need to, if, if you're uh, with somebody and they're y'all are engaged mm -hmm. or, you know, it may seem like the relationship is going that way, you need to study that person even too. So you want to know about family, mm -hmm. habits, how they interact with their family, mm -hmm. how they don't interact with their family, uh -huh. you know, and just study all of that. Because the thing is, you <coughs> want to know and you're never going to fully know what all you're getting anyway, but you would at least have some idea. And then it's like, can I deal with that? Yeah. Well, I think, you know, so it, it just depends. Mm -hmm. But don't go into a relationship with somebody and just blind. Because yeah. it ain't all about, oh, I'm in love with this yeah. person. It's a whole lot yeah. more that come behind it. Good it's morning. a lot of work. Good morning, uh, Ms. Davidson. And good morning, Ms. Sanders. You know, study to show thyself approved. That's right. And that means study that word. And so you, you know, I, I don't remember who I, I heard say it, but it, it makes so much sense. So to become an educator, you got to study. Mm. You got multiple exams to take. Mm. To become a nurse, you have to study. Mm -hmm. You have an exam you have to take. Or a couple of exams you have to take. Uh -huh. You know, for a real estate license, Miss Wanda. You have to study. You have the exam you have to take. You know, so the thing is, <clears throat> getting married, you don't have to do any of that. Uh -huh. You know, but we always push and push and push and express the strong need to go to marriage counseling uh -huh. before you get married. Because I know for us, it opened up all kinds of things we didn't even mm -hmm. think about. Yeah. You know, and it, it just gives you something to to talk about because it sparks conversation or it should it sparks conversation. spark conversation between you and your fiance, you know. Girl, what? <laughs> okay, give me an example of a pop quiz, Lawanda. Give me okay. an example. Hurry up talking. I know you're gonna put something up there for me. What kind of pop quiz? Watch how a man treats his mother and sisters because that's the way. Oh, oh Mr. Yes. Graven, oh, yes, sir. Yes. Oh, yes, yes. Yes, sir. Patrick, my brother. Good morning, Patrick. You off today? On a Saturday? Yes, that's <laughs> exactly right. You know, so that, mm. that makes a big difference. Read that again. So I can I can take this time to mm. to note and say that um I chose a great one. Oh. Yeah. He said, oh. Yeah, I love that. I appreciate that. I try to take care of my mama, you know. Mm -hmm. But um, go back and read. I want you to read what greatness is. Oh, where did it go? Oh, my goodness. Hold oh. on. I got it. I got you. I got you. I got you. Okay. All right. He said, watch how man treats his mother and sisters because that's the way he's going to treat you. Hey, Amen. You need to pay attention to that. You see them cutting up and doing that? Mm-mm. And I just saw um, somebody, uh, Rodney just posted something. Let me see what Rodney said. Okay. Let me move back down here. Okay. So Rodney said, a big part of this is that you have to understand that God is still working on your spouse individually 
and may require and may require patience in order to see the full potential of a person. Amen. We had talked about that a while back mm -hmm. about how exactly. you need to be patient in the work. You set the foundation when you pray for your spouse. You are setting the foundation when you speak the word of positivity over them. When you go find a scripture in God's word and you speak that over your spouse, and it's just like you heaping uh what they said, coals of fire over uh -huh. their head so that they can be blessed. Right. You know. So the thing is, you know, um you 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 continue to do that because that's gonna be something that you see materialize over time. Mm -hmm. The patience that you have that even though you might want to change them right now. And even if you did, what would be the beauty in that? Because they wouldn't value the change because they didn't experience nothing through it. Right. So when you pray for them, they're going to have a fight against themselves and they're going to have a fight against God's touch on them because naturally it's resistant to change when it's the very thing that you need. Okay. That's inner. Mm -hmm. That's not God. It's inner. God knows you need to change. Your spouse see that you need to change, right. but because you don't want to let that go, and then it becomes to. and it becomes that becomes the fight. Mm -hmm. So it says we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against powers, against principalities, you know, and those high powers in the world. But when we when we allow God's word, when we cover the person with the blood of Jesus, mm -hmm. you know you set in a standard against the enemy. Right. And now you can continue to believe and trust God that the things that you see and remember, <laughs> you should, if you don't believe that this is good soil. And the things that you are praying for are beneath. So you can't see my hand. You cannot see my hand. And the things that's going on beneath the screen is the work that's being taking place in the spouse and the husband and the wife. Okay. And then you may see just a sprinkle of a leaf. Mm -hmm. And then you might see two leaves, three. And now you see a full plant. And now it's starting to grow. But at that point, it's a lot of things going on underneath yeah. that you don't see. Right. And so the things that's going on underneath is the things that God is doing. So you have to have the patient, mm -hmm. patience that the farmer that has tilled the soil, which would be us, which would be God, the, fall, the, the soil has been tilled. The soil has been tilled. The seed was planted in prayer. Now it's time for that seed to grow. Well, guess what? Some seeds grow. I, 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 I can tell you this from one day when I bought some tomatoes and I got mad because I was trying to figure out why the other people's tomatoes down the street was growing and mine wasn't because I didn't read the box because it said that the germination period for the type of tomatoes that I bought was like six weeks. And I'm like, who waits six weeks for tomatoes, dog? So that's why I was, I, was, I was upset. And then my neighbor, Mr. Russell, he come over here, hey, girl, you like to see my tomatoes? I'm like, wait, what's wrong with mine? So I went back to read the box. So when you plant a seed, you have to understand that there's a germination period. Right. And it doesn't always happen the way you want it to. Just know that because the soil is good, uh -huh. That it's going to happen. But again, it still goes back to the fact that once you say those vows, it's not just about you yes. or anything. It's about us. You know, everything that we do affects us. us we, you know, and ours. Gerald, I mean, Gerald, Luanda gave uh, some good examples. I didn't get it at first, but I got it now. I understand. So, like, playing the NFL draft, Kings, but we had hot dogs late at <clears> night. <throat> you know, that that's not a good prioritization, if that's a word. Yeah. You know, oh, baby, I quit my job, but I know you got us. Mm -hmm. That's that's about you. Mm -hmm. That's not about us. That's not about we. You know, mm -hmm. so that's the type of things we want to uh, not engage in yeah. as married couples. You have each other. Thank you, Ms. Faith. Davis. I appreciate that. I had to learn that. So, you know, we have to understand that the prayer that we have for one another, mm -hmm. that the things that we want to see in our spouse, because we see that potential, we know it's there. We're asking God to just germinate that. So it has that opportunity to become what God had intended for it to come. Mm -hmm. And Rodney said that it's important 
that you and your spouse have the same spiritual belief. Uh, it's, that's important. You can't speak the word or plant seeds if they don't believe. You know, and that all goes back. That. that goes back to you shouldn't even be uh, joining yourself to an unbeliever in the first place because not that's not going to it's not going to work. And and for those that want to try to prove me wrong, that I can go and I can be a person and they have their faith and I have my faith, mm -hmm. good luck with their pain because that's all you're going to get out of it. You join yourself to a believer that have the same kind of goals and things that you have. Right. If you're a Christian and you believe in the Lord thy God, you believe in Jesus, you believe in that the Holy Spirit is there to help teach you and help groom you and, 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 and discipline you, you on the right track. Exactly. But if you think <clears throat> that you got the power to be with an unbeliever and through all your prayer and all your trials, you're going to change them. You're, you're wasting them your time yeah. and you're going to be an old person at 40. Mm -hmm. You know, you're going to be an old person at 40. Looking 70. Looking 70. Because that's not the work that God wants you to be uh, ingrained in. Right. That is not the work that he wants you to be attached to. Mm -hmm. You don't do that. And so if somebody finds that offensive, I'm sorry. But I really believe in that. Me and my wife didn't get together with those kind of different beliefs. Even our families, even though they may not have agreed to... Uh, just whatever we had both families that had a, a, a areas of faith mm -hmm. and no matter what <clears throat> right. and they tried uh and they watched and they and they they just basically supported us but it was both so we didn't go into that thing like that yeah that's difficult yeah. yeah, so many friends, I, and she said, so so many friends, the one said, so many friends I know are married and come to, to church, but their spouse go to another church, uh, another church, a different faith. I mean, uh, you have to, in a situation like that, you just have to ask God to, to come in and intervene. Right. But you know it's going to take some time because we're not saying that, you know, I don't know what other church they may be going to, but Excuse me, what I'm saying is, as a as a couple, we're not saying that's, that abandoning that's your vows. Good. Yeah, that's not good because that's really sowing discord in mm. the family. And then you tear your kids up behind that foolishness, you know. So that's, mm. that's, that's a hard thing. Um, but again, the one that I think that comes from not having <clears throat> those difficult situations, I mean, those difficult conversations, you know, and then all of a sudden, you don't talk about it. Mm -hmm. You don't agree on anything. And then you still, it's still dividing the family. Uh -huh. Y'all, they may act all, you know, nice and good and everything is, is all right. But when it comes down to serving God, mm -hmm. you know, which, which one are you going to do? <clears throat> you know, but again, that also comes from studying that person, mm -hmm. learning that person before you take that step. Cause I truly believe that all some of that was already going on before they got married. Mm -hmm. You know, so that didn't just come up overnight unless they wouldn't join some cult or something. I don't know. But the, but but the other thing is too, and I agree with you is that you still got the fakers. They'll go to church with you, mm -hmm. and they'll yeah. have a form of godliness, but they'll deny the power thereof. Yeah. Meaning that when you ask them, hey, you want to go over a devotion? I ain't got time for that. Mm -hmm. You know, but you going to church with me. Hey, can we go? I ain't got time for that. You know, hey, hey, hey quit, quit talking to me about that. Mm -hmm. But you thinking that that's actual spiritual uh, relationship with God. But that's, that's not... why you don't run and jump in stuff. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's why you don't run and jump into relationships mm -hmm. because somebody can only fake you for so long. Yeah. But, you know? you, but the problem is, you know, you see the signs mm -hmm. and then you, you, you want to not listen to what God is telling you right because of what you want but they thought they, they could change them yeah but I think what it comes down to Lawanda is that you know you just have to give it to God mm -hmm. when the situations like that because you're gonna you're gonna lose <clears throat> you're gonna be very tired trying to fight right. uh that fight 
you fight that fight by allowing God to give his input to go in and take a situation that's very bad that could, that could be tumultuous right. and and turn around for his good. That's but the why thing you, is, we have to learn how to listen, stop, listen, pay attention, and stop trying to force our will ahead of his. Mm -hmm. So if you know you have a relationship with God, shut your mouth, turn this off, turn, turn the heart off and open your ears and just listen. Yeah. And I think so many times we want things so bad. Mm -hmm. You know, oh, I really want to be in a relationship with that person. I just, you know, I look good on his arm or whatever. Mm -hmm. And you shut <laughs> God out and he, the whole time, he holding up a sign, do not marry this person. Mm -hmm. You know, and you just not listen. You're not listening. Yeah. You know, and that can save you a whole lot of headache yeah. if you just Focus on your relationship with God. Mm -hmm. Open your spiritual ears. Yep. Open your spiritual eyes. I always talk mm -hmm. about walking with your eyes wide open. Mm -hmm. Because when you don't do that, it gets you into a world of trouble. Yeah. So uh, just going back to what we were talking about as far as iron sharpening iron, there's a prayer that I want to read. <clears throat> and it says, Lord, it says, thank you for our marriage. It shapes our minds, hearts, and actions. It says, give us humility to honor each other's strengths and abilities. Show us how to encourage one another in following you. <laughs> Amen. So we're getting ready to wrap this thing up. Uh, and we want you to know how much we appreciate. Um, oh, yeah. Yeah, that's exactly. a whole that's a whole different other conversation. All that yeah. physicality and stuff. So Lawanda said, take sex out of dating because it creates clouds and um, and a lot of uh, overlook a lot of uh, overlooking things mm -hmm. that are important. Yeah. yeah, but see, you uh, you got to have a strong person to not do that, Lawanda, right. because everything is sex 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 sexually oriented. Yeah. You can't even have ice cream truck passed by and it doesn't look like somebody ain't got no clothes on or something like that right. or you see something on tv and it's like well when we were growing up they wouldn't even show nothing like that right. so but here's what we can do <clears throat> as parents hey, as, good morning, as, as, as that's concerned mm -hmm. is instilling those qualities mm -hmm. those expectations those belief systems in our children while they're young you know, being that example, you know, yeah. we always talk about that you're on stage 24-7. Yeah. Yeah. They see what you know they see and they see what you don't think they see. Oh yes, they see you what know. you they see what they see what you don't think they see all the time. All the time. And they'll take that and they'll use that. That'll be trumped over what they see. <clears throat> because it's just like anybody else that's fighting a war. They always look for the chinks in the armor. That's just normal human behavior. Right. So, but if um, you're instilling those <clears throat> in, if you're instilling that those things in your children, mm -hmm. then they will understand the importance of when it comes time to select a spouse, so they're even thinking about it. Yeah. It's like okay, well, and and y'all can call it, you know, I don't know. You can say you have certain qualities that you look for, mm -hmm. but again. There's nothing wrong with that, mm -hmm. having certain qualities that you look for. Mm -hmm. I had certain qualities that I look for mm -hmm. in a man. And all I can say is thank God that he gave me more than what I was looking for. You know, everybody doesn't get that. But again, it's about closing this and opening these and paying attention mm -hmm. to what God is directing you to do or not do. Yeah. And so I think that, you know, when we dated, we, we we really, you know, had to take a different approach <clears throat> from the time when we met until the time when we decided, hey, this is going to another level. And so we really uh, we paid attention mm -hmm. to each other and we paid attention to those that were mentoring us. And that, like, like Nelson said, <clears throat> excuse me, that just made a, a world of, dif uh, of difference in where we are today right. because of those influential people 
in our lives and the fact that their marriages no matter how tough they are or whatever have stood the test of time mm-hmm. we're not talking about toleration I don't need Melissa to tolerate me because if she if she only with me to tolerate me tolerate me she need to go on and be happy because mm-hmm. that's not what marriage is about. Exactly. I'm not sitting there trying to tolerate somebody for twenty some odd years when I can be doing something else. Right. So that's that's not what that's not that's not love and that's not happiness. That's a convenience. That's like a that's like a um, it's like a that's like some kind of weird contract or something that you just do mm-hmm. that you can walk away from or something so um i think that um you know we because of the different things that we've been through and how we approach how we discuss them makes um makes us look at how blessed we are as a couple mm-hmm. because we know some of the the dark or the ugly times and we understand about how we came out of those things and that when you when you apply God's word mm-hmm. and you wait on him right. work is work is being done beneath the surface again and beneath the surface that's where the prayer and all the fighting going on spiritually is taking place because the product and that which you want to see manifest that comes from that comes from the action of what you're doing as a person and the fruit of your lips and what you're speaking out right. and what you're saying that lines up with what he's saying so when you line up the word of god with your situation it's 100 percent of the time going to be uh successful yeah that's that's true uh rodney yeah. said i honestly feel as if we have to start talking uh having that talk with our kids earlier than waiting until they are interested in it they are more tempted if they are interested, ages 14 through 18. Yeah. And you know, right <clears throat> now, I'm even even go forward to say probably even 12 mm-hmm. to 18. You know, because a lot of things, and I had I had this conversation on Facebook with Miss Adams the other day. Yeah. You know, how kids are just out there doing whatever, mm-hmm. you know, walking around without uh parental you know just mm-hmm. paying attention to your kids uh-huh. and we were talking about that and it brought me back to what happened tuesday yeah you know with those kids your kids out late at night you don't know where they are they're walking around on dark streets catching mm-hmm. the bus you know that kind of stuff but thank god that god is god mm-hmm. because i went back and talked to those kids and their officer stayed there until they left okay. he could have left he could have went on another call and said look i'm gonna leave but he stayed. He stayed. I tried to make sure those kids were protected because it was dark. It was it was not a light at that bus stop. And it was a nightclub, not a light still less than two blocks away. Mm-hmm. And so that's just it, it could have been bad. Right. So I and think you need to have that conversation a lot earlier because of the access, the access that they have to this. Oh yeah. See when they got access to the dog on phone, mm-hmm. <clears throat> They got all of the, they got all of the devil's access at their dog on fingertips. Yep. And that's just that's just the truth of the, of the that's just the truth of the, of the problem. Mm-hmm. So, you know. And Mr. Graven, you're right. You know, uh if you're believing in God, he'll show you who the per- how that person really is. But mm-hmm. again, we still have to open these. Yeah. Because if you're walking around like this, these are not open. They no. closed. You know, so you all about what you really want. <clears throat> You know, don't ignore God's voice. Mm-hmm. Don't ignore what He's trying to show you. Mm-hmm. You know, and it may not be pretty, and it may hurt. But the thing is, do you want to be hurt now yeah. and understand and deal with it, mm-hmm. or do you want to walk around with your spiritual eyes and ears closed mm-hmm. and get pulled on down the line, and then everything just blow up in your face? Yeah. So, all right, Mister Sam. Uh-huh. It's about how you bring bring to them. Some parents don't like that talk because it's the uncomfortable nature of it. Switch it switch it up then. Don't talk about sex then. Talk about the reproduction system. Well, you know, but, but here, here's the thing, Rodney, and again, I was talking to Ms. Adams about this. Some people, some parents be so wrapped up in their own drama nowadays, the kid is a non-issue. 
they yeah. like they'll figure it out or somebody else will do it for them. Mm. The educators will take care of them. But you have to realize they came from you. So that makes them your number one priority, your number one responsibility, mm -hmm. not the educators. But again, they got so much drama and stuff going on in their own lives, they're not even looking at the kid. Yeah. So that's where the other problem comes from. All right, baby. Yeah, I'm an hour and five. Okay. All right. So again, we apologize for being late this morning. Yeah. We have had wonderful interaction. I think it's been a great morning. conversation. And, uh, very I think good, that uh, when we talk about iron sharpening iron, you know, you can take that to another level too. You know, you can look at how it, uh, how it impacts your children since mm -hmm. we've been talking about children too. And you know, out of the, what is that, out of the mouth of babes, I forgot what it But I know that sometimes your kids can tell you something about yourself that you might not want to hear, but it's the truth. And so I've learned to listen to them, especially when they say, well, you don't be paying attention to how you, how you respond. Mm -hmm. So now I do, yeah. Because uh, they see it a different way, and the way they see it could be the way other people perceive it. Mm -hmm. So I work on that too. So it's really about being more reflective. It's about allowing uh, yourself to be transparent enough to to say something really positive about yourself, even if you see that it could be a negative uh, aspect of your personality. And God comes in and He makes changes to that. <clears throat> So we're going to get ready to shut it down. We want you to know that we value your input. I think this was an outstanding morning to be able to talk about how we can really uh, build each other up, pour into each other. Remember, we said don't stop doing the things that you used to do. Make sure you pay attention to each other. Know what makes your spouse happy and do those things, not because it's some kind of doggone checklist. It's right. because you actually love them and you want to see the excitement and the joy in their face when you bless them because God is doing the same thing for you. Right. That's my prayer and that's what I would like for you. Um, and then uh, just really just looking at uh, praying over each other and allowing the space for God to do the work uh, behind the scenes. Not to say anything negative about it just because you don't see it when you think you should see it. Right. But understand that any prayer and any, any seed that's planted it has different times to grow. So uh, we're going to shut it down. We're going to have a good Saturday. We love you. We thank you for, for, for chiming in. And we really thank you for the comments. This probably been one of the most interactive ones that we've had where people are really speaking and sharing out. Because that's how we, that's how the Iron Sharp is Iron. Right. We don't right. have all the answers. It's just our experience. But other people have experiences that we may not have had. And so just, just don't forget the old, the overall uh, deal mm -hmm. of, of us doing this is to make sure that we're reaching out and helping others. Yes. But it takes all of us mm -hmm. together to help somebody else. Yeah. You know, so you all, uh, again, thank you. Mm -hmm. We love each and every one of you. Uh, we appreciate you. Mm -hmm. So uh, make sure you like the video, share the video. Yeah. Um, again, because you you know, it's about reaching out and helping mm -hmm. others get to that next level mm -hmm. in their relationship or in their marriage. All right. And so enjoy Thank the you, weekend. Gregory. And uh, we love you too. And uh, we will see you next Saturday to discuss more marriage matters. Because, because your marriage, marriage matters. matters. Bye. Bye. Bye.